Hello everyone, Tawana Michelle here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you have been here before. If you don't know who I am, I am a psychotherapist and recovery coach, and I help folks who are struggling with narcissistic abuse, codependency, and interpersonal trauma. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about why you keep falling in love with potential. We have all been there, we have all done it. I have myself. Many of the things that I share with you guys are things that I have also experienced. Um, this is a judge-free zone, I am not judging. I just find it important to identify unhealthy patterns in ourselves and learn from them so that we can change. When you know better, you do better, sometimes, <laughs> not always. But I wanna talk about why we do that. Um, we just, find these people or these people find us and we know in our heart of hearts they're they're wrong for us we see red flags and ignore them or we choose to not see them and stay in denial but for whatever reason we see the potential in these people and we think okay he could be really great or she could be really great if only and there's this whole list of if onlys and those things don't change and we're still looking at the potential of what these people could be and the type of relationships that we could have with these people so i'm going to give you guys seven reasons why we fall in love with potential so that you can be aware of that and we can break that pattern the first reason that you fall in love with potential is because you really genuinely do try to see the best in people you do, you look for the best, you see the best. So even though there are those red flags and you may see them and you may overlook them, you are putting more weight on the good things that you see in this person. And even if there are way more negative things and there are positive things, you tend to think the positive things outweigh the bad or could potentially, because that's the key, operative word here the positive traits could potentially outweigh the bad and if i can just focus on building those positive traits and overlooking the negative ones then maybe i'll see more of the positive you do that because you are a kind-hearted loving compassionate person you believe that people are inherently good and many people are i would say most people are and i'm not even going to say that the people that we've been in relationships with that have been harmful to us weren't necessarily good people i don't judge people as good as or bad they were uh sick people people maybe with personality disorders people maybe with addictions people who had their own trauma and pain and who had not dealt with it and because you know that because you're likely an empath you feel for these people, you see the best in them, and you wanna overlook the negative qualities. Now, because we're dealing with adults here, that doesn't work. Now, when we are talking about someone who is growing into who they are, like children, right? It does work to focus on those strengths and overlook some of the minor insignificant uh, misbehaviors that we don't like. But that does not work with full grown adults um, who have, personality disorders this is ingrained in them this is who they are when you're dealing with someone like a narcissist you are not going to change them by overlooking those narcissistic traits and focusing only on the good bright side of them which is not even genuine which is a part of their manipulation but that is the first reason that you fall in love with potential is that you want to see the best in these people you do see the best in these people and you put more weight into that. The second reason you fall in love with potential is that when you do see these flaws, when you do see these signs, these red flags that this person is not good for you, you tend to think, well, maybe I can fix them. If I can just love them enough, be the right person for them, help them in the areas that they need help, I can fix them and they will potentially be the person I want them to be. You cannot fix people. No one can fix people. People can only work on changing themselves if they want to, they have to be willing. I'm a therapist, I can't fix people. I don't even make it my job to fix people. I help people identify patterns that are unhealthy for them and to work on changing those to improve their lives. 
I help people identify core issues that are keeping them stuck so that they can heal from that and change their lives. I don't fix and I'm a trained mental health professional. And then there are some of us who think we, we don't even have you know, that training and we still think we can fix people through love. That doesn't work. <laughs> And I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a great concept. Um, it's, again, it shows that you are a very loving, compassionate person. And I'm not saying love cannot he be healing, okay? A loving, safe relationship can be healing in unimaginable, incredible ways, but they cannot fix. There is a difference. If I am working on healing and changing things in my life, then I am working on me. If I am with someone, a partner, who is very kind, loving, and nurturing to me, all of that energy can assist me in my healing. That alone can't fix me if I'm not working on me. So I hope that makes sense to you because there is a difference. Some of you may be saying, no, love can heal love can heal <laughs> if the person you love is willing to do the work on themselves and open up space to let that love in and heal you cannot fix someone who does not want to change you cannot fix someone with a personality disorder i cannot fix someone with a personality disorder who doesn't want to change so that's the second reason you you think you can fix these people? I know I've been there. It's impossible, it doesn't work. The third reason you keep falling in love with potential is that you have a need to rescue. Many of us are codependents or recovering codependents. We have learned that we find value and worth in ourself by doing things for others, rescuing them, being needed, that's where the fixing comes into play. I feel needed when I rescue. I feel worthy when I rescue. I feel better when someone needs me. If they need me to rescue them, then that makes me feel better about who I am. If I'm still in that codependent space. So sometimes we we're not even aware of that need to rescue and we choose people who are projects and we see their potential and it goes back to the fixing we think the we think we can fix them but it's not just about that this is about an inherent need that you may have to rescue someone to feel like a hero to feel like you did something great and something that gives your life meaning and purpose. That's typically a result of codependency, which is a result of not having those needs, your own emotional needs met as a child, not having un unconditional love as a child and discovering that if I can do something to make things better at home, to people please, to, to fix, to rescue the family when things are, are bad or out of control, then I get the love that, that I desire and I feel good about myself. And so I, I, I get even addicted to that and I need it, I need to rescue because that's who I am. That makes me feel worthy. That that gives me purpose. So you find these people or they find you and they're a project and you have the need to, to rescue them. And the fourth reason you are falling in love with potential is that you are choosing partners based on physical attraction and chemistry and you are confusing that with relationship potential. I know that if you have been in toxic relationships or been in relationships with narcissists or other personality disordered individuals or harmful individuals in some way, you likely have a pattern of that and you have amazing chemistry with these people. 
it's magnetic. We are magnetically drawn to the narcissist or the narcissistic type or the abusive type or the un emotionally unavailable type. And they are magnetically drawn to us because they can, we give and we give and they take and they take. We love and we nurture and they abuse and put down. So it's the yin and yang and, and it, it's drawn to each other. So that chemistry and that attraction you feel is due to the familiarity of this person. This person is what you're used to. Uh, this person is what you're used to. This person feels like home. So you feel and a, a pull towards them. And you confuse that with someone who you might be in love with, the whole love at first sight thing, which doesn't exist. <laughs> but you confuse that with something that has potential for a great loving relationship based on what you're feeling initially in the moment. And these people who are, who you're drawn to, who are likely narcissists or some other toxic individual, they know how to love bomb. They know how to play on your emotions. So not only are you gonna have that initial pull and attraction towards them, but they're gonna also do things to intensify that, make it stronger so that you're further in this belief that, oh, this is the person for me because of what I feel. So we don't want to choose romantic partners based on chemistry. I made a video saying uh, uh, why you should avoid people who are your type. Because I imagine some of you are thinking, what? Of course we want someone who we have chemistry with. If you have a history of unhealthy relationships, no, you don't. And I'll uh, link this video or put it at the end so that you can watch it and um, learn why you need to avoid people you have chemistry with. If you've been in relationships where there's a pattern of some form of harm or abuse to you. And the fifth reason you are falling in love with potential is that you are choosing relationships that can potentially heal childhood wounds. Our romantic relationships are basically a way to reenact any childhood traumas, any unresolved childhood wounds that we still have in an attempt to recreate those things so that we can heal from them. That's just the way it is. That's how Mother Nature and the universe has set it up. We learn about relationships from the first relationships that we've experienced, which were those with our primary caregivers. And if you have a history of unhealthy, dysfunctional, romantic relationships, you likely have something very similar with mom and dad, whoever raised you. And whatever you were trying to get from them that you didn't get, you are going to recreate that in your adult relationships and still be fighting to get that and recreating, recreating that same relationship dynamic. So that's more of a subconscious thing. It's not something that many folks are actively aware of. It's important to, to be aware of it so that you can recognize, oh wait, this is, this feels very similar to what I felt with dad when I was always trying to get his attention and he never noticed me or he was always putting me down saying things to me that made me feel like I wasn't good enough. This feels very familiar. So we are subconsciously reenacting those childhood relationships in an attempt to heal them. And because it's really about healing for us, we see that we see the potential in that through those relationships. I'm not going to say we see it because again, it's, it's not conscious. We feel on an intuitive, emotional, subconscious level, we feel the potential to have something that we never had. And we seek these people out who can help us recreate that and try to heal from it. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, you only, let me say, let me not say it doesn't work. I will say those relationships typically don't work. But I will say 
it works in a sense that it does bring those wounds to the surface and it creates opportunity to do some amazing healing work and for incredible growth and change and transformation in your life. It works in that way. In fact, that's really the purpose of it. So you're trying to recreate these childhood relationships in an attempt to heal from them. And that's why you're falling in love with uh, these types of people. The sixth reason you are falling in love with potential is that you don't really know your worth. And so you are unsure if you deserve better. So you may see that these people are not good for you. You see all the signs, but you think, well, at least they want me. At least they chose me. I don't know if I can do any better than them. So I am going to look at how this relationship with all of its shortcomings, flaws, and even abuse, how this can potentially work. Because I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if I can do any better. So when you don't see your worth, you see any relationship as potentially better than none. And that's going to bring me to my last point. The seventh and last reason you keep falling in love with potential is that you just want to be in a relationship and you are afraid to be alone. So even though this person is incapable of having a healthy relationship, again, at least you have a relationship, at least you're not alone. So you settle. And again, you look at how it can potentially improve, which takes a lot of self-sacrifice on your part, which takes having really poor boundaries on your part, which takes allowing abuse, mistreatment, disrespect in your life. So when you can accept that you are in these relationships for the purpose of just being in a relationship and you don't want to be alone, and you think you don't deserve better, when you can acknowledge that and see the truth about that, then you can work on changing that. You can work on changing those core beliefs about yourself. You can work on improving your self-worth, your self-love, healing those childhood wounds, going through the painful, toxic loneliness that you will experience after the end of a relationship with a narcissist or another toxic individual. Going through the, the emotional withdrawals associated with that, getting to the other side of it, grieving the loss. Not wanting to be alone is associated with those childhood dynamics where your needs weren't met, you felt unseen, unheard, unloved. And there was an overwhelming sense of loneliness and emptiness that you felt. And it's painful to feel that. But there is no way around that you have to go through it. That's, that's a part of the healing process. It's feeling those wounds, feeling those feeling those emotions, grieving those losses, changing those core beliefs, breaking old patterns that no longer work, no longer serve you, getting out of these relationships with these unhealthy people and staying out of them. And that's the reason I'm talking about this again. I've been there and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. I didn't know. I mean, after the most, uh, what should I say, shattering and traumatic narcissistic relationship that I was in, which almost literally cost me my life, I started doing some research and I learned these things. And this was years ago. 
But I didn't know at the time I was in it. So I had like a wake up call as a result of literally almost dying. And I learned that I could have seen signs along the way. I could have done some things differently had I known, but I just didn't know. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get into my story. I'm just saying I want to share this, this uh, information with you guys. I think it's valuable. I think it's significant. I think that when you know better, at some point you do better, even if it's not right away. So that's all I have, guys. Um, let me know what you think about these seven reasons that you fall in love with potential and share your thoughts and experiences with me down below in the comment section. And don't forget, if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. That really does help my channel. You guys have been amazing with liking videos, leaving comments, uh, sharing it out. Continue to do that so we can get all of this information out to the people who need it. And also, if you have not subscribed to my channel and joined this community, go ahead and do so. What are you waiting on? We'd love to have you here. And I think that's it. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye.